All right, so welcome to this webinar about simplifying contract signing with electronic signatures and Salesforce integration. The webinar is presented by One Span Sign, Soljit, uh, and who is a Silver Consulting Partner for Salesforce. Um, today's speakers, uh, we're going to have Louis Nicole Amer, who's VP Customer Solutions at Soljit. So Soljit is a, a cloud consulting and implementation firm. Uh, they help companies with solutions like Salesforce, OneSpan Sign, and others. We'll have also Fred Onorato, who's a regional sales manager for OneSpan. Uh, OneSpan is a world leader in electronic signatures. Um, if you're not familiar with the name, they just underwent a rebranding uh, about two weeks ago. So during the presentation, if you also see mentions of eSign Live, uh, they are the same company. So OneSpan just had a recent rebranding. Uh, and I'm your host, David Lamarche, working at Soljit. Uh, quickly, the agenda. First, a brief introduction about digital transformation. Uh, electronic signatures with one span, so what makes one span so good at what they do. Then a demo of one span with uh, Salesforce. Uh, then little case studies, conclusion, and question and answer. Uh, presentation will last about 35, 40 minutes. Uh, and then the Q&A. Uh, so um, no need to worry, uh, the webinar will end way before the start of the Croatia-England game for those who are following the World Cup. Um, so a quick word on digital transformation. Uh, it is a buzzword. It is used uh, in all kinds of contexts for all kinds of reasons. Um, one simple way to think about it uh, is just like every technology that uh, were created and solutions that were created over the past few decades, uh, the ultimate objective and result is to uh, make things go faster, enable more productivity. So think of, of it as something that, that enables you to uh, convert things that took one week, one day, one hour, into things that took one day, one hour, one minute. Uh, so whether it's you, your team, uh, if you have digital transformation KPIs, uh, that's really uh, a simple uh, but honest way to think about the objectives of digital transformation. Uh, and of course, electronic signatures uh, are a part of that. Um, uh, what do electronic signatures help to do? Well, it, it helps make all of this you see here a bit faster. Uh, sales and contract signing uh, processes smoother with electronic signatures uh, because you can you know, track your contracts, your signatures easier. It makes uh, information access and storage easier. Uh, there's less copy and paste. There's less loss of information. Uh, and also, uh, when managers try to see where we are in the process of a contract, well, again, everything is digital, so it's much, much easier to follow up. So that is the whole intent. Uh, that is the goal. And now let's start with our friend Fred, specifically about one sign, the one span. Thank you, uh, David, for the introduction. So um, thank you very much, uh, so just for inviting us to uh, this uh, webcast today. So my name is Fred Onorado. I'm a regional sales manager. I've been with the organization for 11 years. So um, David, can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. So uh, one span uh, sign, uh, formerly uh, under the name of eSign Live by Vasco, and for some of you that know us for quite a while, also under the name of Solanus Technology. Uh, essentially, we've been doing electronic signatures and uh, digital security for over 25 years. And when we focus on key regulated industries. These are industries uh, that that you know process a lot of documents, which a lot of them require signatures. So this platform is built on those requirements, very stringent, very demanding uh, requirements in terms of making sure uh, you know the parties have agreed to the terms and conditions on on documents being presented. So it's a single platform available in multiple deployment options. Uh, we've got data centers around the world. Canada, the US, Australia, Britain, and as well uh, Germany, uh, which uh, have you know, each of these data centers on the public cloud side, but we also have on-premise or private clouds more specifically. Our organization is traded on NASDAQ, so if you want to take a look at our financials, a very sound organization, you know, close to $200 million in annual sales, uh, last 56 
quarters have been profitable organizations. So I invite you to look at, at, at our financials as, your, as part of the due diligence process. Uh, these are some organizations that utilize our platform. Um, uh, we have a, uh, several case studies, I think, that are worthwhile for us to talk about, talk about a little later. So uh, uh, what are the analysts saying about one span sign? And there's been two bodies, in my opinion, that have done a great uh, market survey uh, of this this market, and and one of them is called Forrester, well known organization. Uh, they did a what is called a vendor landscape back in late 2016. They look at the market, they look at the vendors, and they you know you know they, they assess these these market. And what they confirm is that one span sign is a leader in the electronics and space. There are others players out there. And invite them to 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 look at you know what the market is, but we are part of that leadership quadrant. Um, another entity uh, called G2 Crowd, which I personally like because of their approach. What they do, contrary to Forrester, Forrester has an analyst that you know, surveys the market. They do a great job, but it's still one person's opinion on based on the interviews they've done with the various vendors. G2 Crowd cares about customer reviews. And, and, and they've you know, compiled over 2,500 reviews so far of various vendors, uh, various customers of the various platforms. You know, one span sign has had, that they believe, close to 650 reviews under uh, the, the brand. And, and what came out of it is they are able to measure customer satisfaction. That's key because at the end of the day, when you're choosing a vendor, you want to make sure that, hey, am I going to be happy with this vendor? Well, you know, G2 Crowds confirmed that for nine times in a row, the last four and a half years, once Pantan has come leader in customer satisfaction. This is measured on net promoter score, which is an index that measures customer loyalty, been ranging between 82 and 85 in the last uh, four and a half years, and our competitors have been trailing behind, never caught up to us on this, on this index. Another one that's important, which is not in the slide, but I think I worth mentioning is the retention of customers Staying with one span sign over the years, as you know, we're a subscription based model, there's a the beginning and the end, and at the end, what do customers do? Do they stay with one span sign or do they go elsewhere? We've got a 96% retention rate, which is awesome because it just tells us that you know, they're stick, our customers are sticking with us over time. So what are the key drivers? What's driving organizations to even consider this technology? And, and, and it really falls into three key buckets. One is you want to make it simpler for the signers to sign documents. You know, in today's digital world, as David alluded to, you know, we're trying to squeeze that time frame to getting it more quicker and faster. Uh, one way to speed up the process is make the signing ceremony much more simpler. Having someone to print out, sign in the case of a remote signing process, or printing it out and you know signing it and you know somewhat you're missing something missing signature didn't do it right uh, and, and and now you have to redo the whole thing which is not necessarily a good experience so from a signer's perspective you want to make it easy for them so you want them to sign anywhere anytime on any device this is key criteria any device because we're in today's digital world we've got mobile devices we've got computers you know, people use a lot of these devices, whatever they feel convenient using, let them use it. There are also people chasing. These are often salespeople. Um, it could be uh, other type of roles that, you know, send out documents. Uh, and, 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 and then when they send it out in the paper world, often it's to an attachment of, an, of documents in an email or in some form of secure access to documents being shared on the portal or even the old paper process, mail, faxing, uh, these still are being used today. And, 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 and then once it's out there, you don't know what's going on. And then when it comes back, is it done right? You know, have they done it right? Did it miss something? Uh, and, and when there's errors, then that creates a risk. Uh, you know, there's a risk factor involved. Do I proceed or do I start all over or do I correct what I got? So, with one span sign, you're reducing those errors and, and, and the processing time of, of, of managing these processes, these documents. And lastly, there's a reason you get signatures in the first place. In the ideal world, handshake or verbal agreement would be the way to go. So easy, so quick. But, you know, there are audits, there are legal disputes. 
And often is, what did I agree upon and sign up for? Well, this is where the paper trail comes into play. And how does one span address this? To an extensive audit trail of the process, not only the signed documents, which has verifiable signatures that is independently verified from our platform. It's really to the Adobe Reader application that opens up the document. Then you can actually state, check the status of that signature on the fly inside the PDF uh, Reader application. No need to go to our system. But we also capture additional evidence how did I get to the signed document, which is a report that gives you the login events of what occurred, and as well, too, screenshots of the signing process. So very detailed, because at the end of the day, if there's a legal dispute, you want to make sure that what has been agreed upon will be enforced in a case where you're going to court, but the whole point is to not go to court. When you bring all this evidence, then you have compelling evidence that these are the terms and conditions, and often it's always about a clause or two that people actually you know, look at it and they say, well, I never saw this clause. And when the one you just, you know, some people say, well, what if I just slid a piece of paper and a page inside a stack of documents? That's often a, a tactic used. But with all this evidence, securely verifiable, makes it very difficult for people to repudiate what they sign. So in terms of the big picture, when you're looking at what is the value of this technology to my operation? How do I assess the return on investment? Uh, based on our 25 years of experience, we've kind of narrowed it down to three categories where the impact of return investment applies. And, and, and it really go, boils down to who the signers are. Uh, you've got three categories. One is B2E, so basically inside the organization with various processes which are require signature. That's one key area. Second one is the customer. And, and there's two categories, one B2B and one B2C. As you're looking at return investment, when you're scaling outside the organization, you get a bigger bang for a buck. So basically, better, better return on investment. And when you're scaling to the consumer, uh, which is high volume, but also higher risk uh, in terms of legal dispute, this is where you get your highest return on investment. Not to say internal you don't, but it's a question of the magnitude of volume and impact on return investment. So as you're assessing your return investment, look at the various use cases out there that you have, you require this technology. So sometimes we get these questions, are electronic signatures legal? In Canada, the answer is yes. And it's uh, there's really, um, there's a federal law, which is called the Canada Uniform Electronic Act, enacted in 1999, and each of the provinces and territory have their own equivalents in terms of uh, electronic act, which states that you can use electronic signatures. And what that means is when you go to court with electronically signed document, the courts cannot refuse on the basis that it was signed electronically. That's what it means. You still have the rules of, of, of admissibility of records in the court of law, so you start to prove that these are authentic and this is how our technology with the security around the transactions, provide that to the judge and says, you know, hey, this is what has been signed. Here are the verifiable signatures, and content was not altered because they're just going to say, well, did you you had a chance to alter these documents? Have you? And our platform will allow you to demonstrate that it's not been altered after the fact. But what these are what the laws provide to you, and and and, and make sure that you know when you're submitting your documents to court. You know, courts will accept them based on, again, rules of admissibility of records. And if you're in the U.S., well, U.S. has equivalent laws, uh, the federal law, which is the E-Sign Act, and each of the states have their own UEDA. There's uh, three exceptions uh, in three states, Washington, Illinois, and New York, uh, but the federal law subsidies the, uh, the, the, the state laws. So, so as you're looking at possibly implementing these vendors, these, these, this technology, there are various vendors out there, and uh, they basically do the same thing. They, they, they present documents for signature, they may capture signatures, and produce electronic evidence. What makes us different? One key area is adoption. How do we achieve that highest adoption rate is our white labeling capabilities. We can white label the whole signing process to be your brand and your brand only. What does that mean is inside the user experience, the signing process, we put forth your brand only. We don't put any slogan powered by one span sign or eSign Live. We strictly put your brand because at the end of the day, with your signers, mostly it would be customers, third parties, 
it is your brand that you want to put forward. You want to share the spotlight with any other vendors, and rightfully so. Uh, if you look at another component of the communication is email. And in today's world, phishing threats more specifically, they're, they're out there. Uh, scammers are just sending emails on the behalf of somebody else. Uh, and, and your brand could be affected by that. And also our brand too as well. So we allow your the emails going out. We produce those emails. However, they could be coming from you, from your domain name. Because when they're conducting business with you, they're trusting you as an organization and they'll trust an email coming from you. If it's coming from a third party, the first question is, is this a legitimate email? Should I trust it? Most often people will say, based on security practices, delete that email. Don't go through it because it might be a phishing expedition. So essentially we allow you to drive that email to come from you. And it's just a, a configuration setting on our, on our system. Emails can be also temp, uh, templated to be your look and feel as well to your, again, your experience. And another key differentiator versus other is we also produce the best electronic evidence in the market space. And it's really kind of talked about a little earlier. We have signatures that are verifiable just by clicking the signature and an auto show will pop up inside the, Acro the PDF document. If you're using Acrobat Reader or you know the PDF Reader, these are capabilities that are standard in these uh, applications. All it is is that when you click on a signature, that auto trail will pop up and will give you basically a status. Is this the legitimate document? Has it been altered? Uh, who signed it? When it was signed? Uh, we captured the IP address and, uh, and other traces of evidence inside the document. So there's, a, there's basically the validation of the documents and the signatures are done inside the PDF. So there's no need to validate that with our platform or website to state that these documents are legitimate. Other vendors will ask you to, of course, go to their system of records to do that. We don't because these documents may have a very long lifespan. Often, in especially in financial services, it's life of the document plus seven years. So you're looking at least a decade, if not more, and you don't want to be dependent on that e signed vendor to validate verify signature. So that's one key area. So there are other evidence that we produce. How did I get to the signed document? One is a report that gives you a log of events of what occurred in terms of the signing process. So basically gives every step of what the signers did to beginning to end. So this kind of goes to how did I get there in the first place? So how did I access the transaction? How did I end up signing the document? So it goes all the way down in very detailed step. But we also take it a step further, which no other vendor comes close to, is we also capture screenshots of the signing process. So we can go step by step visually what they did and what they signed up for. So it goes back to that concept of, yeah, I did sign this document, but I never saw that clause on page number five, and you guys must have slipped the page inside the stack of document, making, okay, this is what I signed, but I never saw that page number five, and I never signed up for it. Well, the document, the signed document will prove that you have that clause on page number five, but the screenshots, what we call this e-witness, so the electronic witness, really provides that evidence that yeah, you did sign up, you saw it at this time, you spent two minutes on this uh, document uh, and you signed up for it. So, hey, you've got, we've got the evidence. Now the burden falls on the other party to prove that they did not see it and that becomes very difficult for them to do so. So we've got customers telling us they deflected millions of legal challenges going to court. And at the end of the day, when you do need signatures on documents, this matters. So this is the last slide before we actually go to the uh, demonstration of the, uh, the application that Louis is going to do. Uh, but this is kind of a good subset to what is an e-signature workflow look like. So imagine I'll use a person, this person here as a role, playing a role of customer. They're going to negotiation with an account team, uh, person, a rep that's, you know, negotiating, teas, basically negotiating a business process at some point that needs to have documents signed. So some system will produce the documents. And at some point, there'll be the presentation of those documents. And it's all about first, you know, you, you know your process of the paper will, how do you access it from an electronic perspective? Well, it could be an email triggered that go act that give you access to the transaction. Or if you're inside a mobile app or, or a online portal, you will go through the signing process. Next is you need to authenticate that person. Now the laws on electronic signature says you need to authenticate, it doesn't tell you how. So you get to choose what's right for you based on 
the security, or the risk factor of that transaction. In financial services, they would want some form of authentication methods, like either an SMS code be sent to the person or a security question being asked. Uh, in B2B, rarely the case because B2B, there's a concept of trust. I'm dealing with a business organization. And when I send an email to that person, I know I can trust that that's the person that I'm dealing with. So uh, just receiving an email and accessing the transaction without any further authentication, sometimes it's good enough because at the end of the day, when you're getting receiving an email, you need your username and password to access the, do, the, the, the email in the first place. So that's a form of authentication by itself. Is it good? Some people say yes, some people no. That's why we have other methods. And you can take it a step further. You can use a third-party service to validate the signature to our partnership with Equifax, or you can use two-factor authentication with our technology with WhatsApp. Uh, that really takes it a step further. Do you really need that? It's a question of really a risk factor associated to the, to the signature process. There's the presentment of documents. You're on a desktop or mobile device, and you can establish an ordering of documents. And you can also make documents visible or invisible to certain individuals inside a transaction. You can capture data at point of signing uh, if that's required, unless the documents are fully prepared for signature. And you can also apply a method to sign either click to sign, which is basically legally binding signature, kind of similar to what people used to do when they didn't know how to read and write. They would put an X, so the click to sign kind of mimics that. Or, of course, you can capture a handwritten signature, but they're hardware considerations like you know if you're signing with a mouse it's a little tedious to do but if you're using a mobile device great devices to do that uh, you can establish documents that to be uploaded back to you let's say i well i need a copy of your driver's license well why don't want to include it in the signature workflow and then lastly if this is you know you're legally binding to deliver all the signed documents back to all the individuals well once band sign allows you to deliver those documents securely through ed email notification or just some other form to access the documents. And in that, I will pass over to Mike uh, back to, I believe, Louis. Good. Uh, yeah, so thanks, Fred, for giving us an overview of uh, one span sign. Uh, so I'm uh, Louis Hamer here with Soljit. Uh, what I wanted to show you today is uh, the integration of one span sign with uh, Salesforce. Uh, what's, uh, we, one of the things that we take a lot of pride here at uh, Soljit is that we drink our own champagne. So, you know, we recommend Salesforce to our customers. We recommend OneSpan to our customers. Well, guess what? We also use uh, daily Salesforce and OneSpan. And what I'm going to actually demonstrate is directly within our own Salesforce environment how I use uh, OneSpan uh, to send out my uh, service proposals and contracts to my uh, pr prospective customers or existing customers. I'm going to show you two different flows today. The, uh, the first flow is, you know, as Fred was showing, you know, if you have a, a low volume amount of, um, of uh, service contracts that you need to send out, uh, there is a professional license that you can get. And the professional license uh, allows you to integrate into Salesforce but there are still a couple manual steps that you need to do, and that's what I'll show you. And by showing you those manual steps, you'll sort of understand how e-signatures uh, function within Salesforce. And then in a second step, I'll do a second demonstration where I'll show you these, uh, the licensing from one span called Enterprise, which allows you a full integration and full automation. And you'll see that within a couple seconds, I can send out a proposal to my customers via email and allow them to uh, digitally sign uh, that uh, document. So uh, with that said, let's get started. So as you can see, I'm logged into Salesforce right now. I uh, created a test account here called Test Company within Salesforce. As you can see, I have a contact here called Joe CEO pointing to one of my email addresses so I can show you uh, what, uh, what the emails look like when uh, they're received by the customer. And I've already created a opportunity. So within Salesforce, obviously, you can create an opportunity where uh, you're, you'll be tracking, you know, wh what are all the different opportunities that uh, are available um, and that you're following up on. Uh, let's uh, pretend that in this particular case, uh, I just got a verbal okay for my proposal from the customer, so I can go to waiting for signature right here. And I'll just open up the quote. So here's a very quick quote that I had created uh, to be sent out to uh, my test company here um, with uh, you know, the, some of the information on 
what is the first payment due, what are the uh, uh, business uh, development rates, uh, with the totals, the taxes, everything is auto-calculated by Salesforce. And as you can see here, I have a quote line item, which I'll just open here for a second. So quote line item is basically, you know, one of the line items for my quote. In this particular case, I just have one, where I've imported a product. So what's great with Salesforce, as you may know, is you can have all of your products or services preloaded in the platform, and all of your list prices and your price list also uh, imported. So you just select, you know, what are the products that you're selling, uh, add in the pricing. You can put in a description, you know, so if this is going to be a professional service for uh, Salesforce and OneSpan project, as an example. So I've basically, you know, in a couple clicks on the mouse, created a quote within Salesforce, and I'm now ready to send it to my customer. So with the first flow I'll show you is sort of the longer way, which there's a couple of manual steps, but it's a, a great way to demonstrate how this works. So what we'll do, the first thing is we'll just come here and we'll click on this button that we created here called Conga. So Conga is a document generation tool. Uh, what it does basically, it uh, basically will take a template that you can create in Word or uh, you know any other type of format and uh, you can then um, select what is the proper template that you want. And once uh, you've selected the template, what it'll do, so in this particular case, I'm gonna say I wanna send a quote for my bank of hours. It's in English. I could have sent my French template. As you can see, they're, they're just Word templates that I have created. And I'll just say that I wanna save a copy of this uh, document that I'm gonna generate within uh, Salesforce, and I'm gonna click Merge and Download. So what this does is Conga is auto, going to auto-generate uh, my quote using the template that I selected, and it's going to grab from Salesforce all of the automated fields that we want. And uh, we'll see in a second, so I'm, it's auto-opening Word here. The idea being that I can uh, visualize the quote that was just created. So as you can see, you know, it's a nice quote with our, uh, our logo, our, our contact information, it pulled automatically from Salesforce the information from, uh, for the customer, their address, the quote number, the expiry date. Here are the, here's the line item that I created. And it'll auto-calculate, obviously, you know, pricing and add the uh, taxes and things like that. And of course, you know, all of my you know, standard terms of services are included. And I have the uh, signature field where we'll be able to sign myself and my customer. So that's you know the, the, what the document is auto-created. So I don't have to create it manually. It's auto-created for me. Once it's created, I just go back to the actual quote. And in my quote, as I'll show you in a couple seconds, um, I now have attached directly to my quote the Word document that was just generated by Conga. This is great because it's now archived directly and it's uh, directly to your specific quote so you don't have to store this on a Google Drive or on your own PC and then you, 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 know, you can lose it or your colleagues may not have access to it so everything is directly saved. Then what I'll do is I'll just say, well, I want to create a new eSign Live package. Um, so the way to, 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 to do that is just say new. And this will just show you some of the you know, quick steps of how you can manually create um, your document uh, so that it will be sent via uh, the uh, OneSpan platform. So first thing I'll do is I'll just say that this is for my test company opportunity. I'll click Next. And then the system will prompt me for a, a little bit of information. So the first information that the, the system will ask me is, uh, what is the document that you want to uh, send by e-signature? So I'll just say add document. The document that I just created with Conga is right here. So I'll just say add, and I add selected documents. 
it then asks me, well, who is going to sign? Who are the signers for this uh, document, right? So of course it auto-populated my name since uh, I'm going to you know sign uh, part of the contract, and then I can just say I want to add a, sign a signer. I'll say that it's a contact, and I'll say that it's Joe CEO here. And uh, I've basically now uh, selected uh, the different uh, signers. I can also click this little box here to enforce signing order. So I, it'll prompt me to sign the document before it actually sends it to Joe CEO. Now that I've done that, I can click on prepare. And what this does is e-signature, uh, e, uh, you know, one span in the background will automatically grab the uh, uh, Word document and it'll uh, present it uh, to me in a, this a little window here in a couple seconds. The first thing it'll show me is the electronic disclosure and signature consent. So this is just the consent of, you understand what is a, you know, an e-sign uh, document and then ask you for your consent that you understand uh, uh, how this works. So I can just say next. And in this particular case, I'm just going to say, well, I want myself to be a signer, and I want Joe CEO to be a signer as well. And when I'm done, I can just click Close. And I can now send this document So what this does is it'll auto send uh, the document to uh, myself and to uh, the customer. In this particular case, I said enforce signing order. So the first thing it'll do is it'll uh, prompt me to sign the document. So as you can see now, I can click on sign. So I will sign my service contract. I'll just show you how easy that is. I can just click on this, it'll bring me directly to the click to sign. That's one option. If you prefer to have a, you know, a, a, an actual signature, you can as well, but click to sign is the, definitely the easiest in my opinion. I just say okay. And voila, I've now automatically signed this document. And as you can see, it says e-signed by Louis Nicola Hamer on today's date with the, the date uh, and time. So I've actually completed my uh, part of the contract signature. Now the system will uh, auto send this via email to my customer. And we'll just uh, refresh here. Here is my eSign Live or one span. So this is the email I would get. It would say, hey, Joe CEO, Louis Nicola has added you as a signer to this package. I can click on go to documents. It opens up eSign Live by Vasco, just like I had to, I have to sign the consent document first. So I go to the bottom and I click Accept. And I can as well come here, review the quote, and just click to sign as well. And voila. I can now uh, download this document and save it for my archive as a customer, right? Uh, or I can just say, I'm done. I can exit and I'm actually logged out of eSign now. And voila, so that's uh, how it works uh, you know, with the professional license with a couple manual steps. So this is a great, uh, uh, great solution for uh, you know, customer uh, com companies that have a, uh, less contracts to send. But of course, you know, it can be a little uh, long for customers that have a high volume. So we have the second uh, way of doing it. So let's just go back to my opportunity and I'll show you the second method. So I'll go again to my quote. So in this case, instead of creating a conga quote and then you know, manually generating an eSign Live package or a one-span sign package, uh, you know, and, and doing uh, positioning the signatures and doing all that stuff, which can take a little bit of time, I, we've created another um, uh, workflow which automates the whole process. So I'm just going to click here on eSign Quote English. 
And what this will do is it will automatically de uh, create the, doc the Conga document. It will then pass it along to eSign. I don't have to do anything. It will grab all the different signers automatically and uh, everything will be completed. So we'll just let Conga do its thing here very quickly. Merge is complete. I can uh, click here. I'm just going to wait a couple seconds. So here, this was the eSign package that we created a couple minutes ago that was completed. It says all signers have signed. This is the package that was just created um, by um, uh, eSign, fully automated. So in this particular case, uh, I haven't signed yet, so I'm just going to go in. And I'm going to sign the document. By signing a document, I can do two things, right? And because I've, I'm enforcing the signing order, I can just validate that the contract is, uh, uh, is uh, correct. So I can just click on Sign here. It'll bring me the contract automatically. As you'll see, the signatures were, um, were automatically positioned properly. And I can double check, yep, yeah, the quote looks fine. I'll sign it, say OK. I can close it, and now again the document will be sent automatically uh, to my customer right here. Boom! He can now open it again and sign the document. So as you can see, you know, within a couple seconds, with uh, the fully automated way, we can generate quite a lot of documents, and we can actually go even further. That whole process can be uh, automated with a workflow where the machine. Uh, you know, your PC or your system is auto-generating all of these documents, so there's no manual intervention uh, whatsoever. So it's just a, a quick way to uh, uh, go a lot faster for, with the process. So with that said, I hope uh, that was uh, uh, that helped you understand, you know, the different uh, uh, ways you can uh, embed uh, uh, e-signatures within uh, your, your Salesforce uh, uh, org, and uh, I'll pass it over to um, uh, David and uh, Fred to conclude. All right. Uh, so, so, so thank you, uh, David. So, I, I, I do want to spend some time on this case studies as some of these organizations highlighted here, uh, uh, how they're using it, and what is the value that came out of that implementation. There's three organizations have done this really large. Uh, implementation, and, and I'll start with one main, one main uh, financial uh, organization based in the U.S. that do subprime lending. So basically, they have a extensive network of branches across the U.S. We're talking about 1,700 of these, um, which they implemented um, one spend sign in their branches, but also in the call center. So because not necessarily everybody goes into a branch to get a loan. They will do the call center or even apply online uh, to to get a, a, a loan. So um, what what these guys produce millions of documents and pages. This all had to be stored, and their biggest challenge was you know once they, the documents were signed, it's where do they keep those documents? Uh, and they kept piling up, piling up, and 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 it was very costly for the the organization. So what what happened with um, implementing one span sign? It allowed them to streamline, eliminate errors, uh, but more importantly, the cost saving behind the scene. Um, organizations like these have to make sure that what they're getting uh, once the packages are signed, are they in good order? Are they properly signed? Is there a missing signature somewhere in the document? And you have people actually checking this out to see, making sure that you know this is done right. So it's costly and it's time consuming and uh, inefficient process. So one span sign was able to automate the, um, the, the creation process, but also once it was signed, making sure it was done right every time. And then once it's done, don't need to have a human validate and verify that the documents were properly signed. It gets stored into their electronic storage system. 
So uh, their, their savings were really through the roof in terms of, you know, uh, uh, in terms of uh, hard costs. And that that was one of the, the the main main drivers, but it was also the experience, making it easier for the customers to sign and, and, and connect and conduct business with them. Uh, another organization, U.S. Bank, uh, kind of very similar than than One Main in terms of, uh, you know, they have a network of branches. We're talking about three thousand of these branches across the U.S. and uh, and, and in their case, um, the before and after process was before it was a 14 step process to go to a an account opening or a loan process uh, and it was filled with errors uh, most often and that had a major implication to the organization as to uh, do we actually keep this you know not properly signed document or do we call the customer and have them come back to the branch to fully sign the documents correctly? So um, it was a call and it was it depend. And in some cases they invited the customer in and that was not a necessarily good, a good experience, you know, calling up the customer saying, can you come back? We didn't do it right, there was a mistake. And, you know, of course the customer is not too happy um, and that lowered the satisfaction uh, experience of the customer or avoid that conversation and say, you know what, we're gonna take the risk, we're gonna keep it, even though if there's a legal dispute or an audit, we might be in trouble. But over time, uh, they, they did the latter, right? They, 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 but, but they accumulated a big portfolio of these loans, especially loans, uh, which amounts to about a half a billion in value. And if ever there's a legal dispute, they probably would not win. They would probably lose, and, and, and that was becoming more and more of a risk. So when they implement uh, one span sign, they were able to make it, you know, right every time. And 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 the way the brand the branches work is that everything was funneled from the branch to a back office central headquarters. Uh, and there was a group of 40, 50 people there. Actually, all they did day in day out was to check it to see if the documents were right. If they weren't right, like I said, either they're thrown back to the branch to them to do it properly or keep it and then stored in their, their central system. Um, so with, with one span sign, they, they basically reduced the, those effectives in a way that they were relocated for other, other um, uh, purposes of the organization, but it streamlined the whole process. So they went from 14 steps down to nine steps in terms of the process. So it allowed the loan officers to sit with the customers and spend more time with them selling other products and services at the bank. Uh, lastly, with SunTrust, uh, they started with treasury management um, and their account opening process. Uh, it's all about um, making it quick and easy for the customer to start using their services. And beforehand, it was a four day process. And most often, four days, because there was a lot of back and forward on, on stuff, which meant uh, email communications and so forth. These are business organizations that use these services. And, 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 and it was a very tedious process and, and not necessarily a good experience for the customer. We once spent time, they were able to reduce that significantly to a matter of, of a day. So this made it a lot faster to deliver the products and services. And that's where they felt that it was the customer experience, but at the same time, they still needed those signatures, and those signatures matter to them as, you know, uh, whenever there's a legal dispute, we want to make sure we've got ample evidence, and they valued that tremendously, and that was a big, big factor for them to go with us. So uh, this is kind of a portrait, and there's so many use cases out there, but this gives you a good idea how these organizations uh, implemented, but also what value derived from the technology. Um, All right. David, back to yeah. you, David. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Um, so very quickly, the conclusion, and then we'll move to the Q&A. Um, so as we've seen, uh, electronic signatures with one span uh, simplifies the funding process end-to-end -end for both employees and customers. Out of that, of course, uh, not only your staff is more productive, uh, but the customer journey as well is, is much better and much faster. Uh, it's multi-platform. You can have your custom branding, uh, legal and secure, and as well as you saw, one of the great features, the visual audit trail, 
um, uh, taking screenshot of what the signee sees, um, which is a great feature. Uh, Salesforce and one span. So if you're using Salesforce or considering using it, uh, there's a strong synergy with uh, uh, electronic signatures and one span, uh, which again uh, increase productivity of employees and improve the customer journey and uh, shorten delays between ending off a contract, waiting for signatures, is it signed? I don't know. Let's call the customer fax, print, mail, etc. Uh, and finally, uh, if you're looking for an implementation partner. Uh, either for Salesforce, one span or both. Of course, Sol Soljit uh, can do that and much more. So now we're going to move to the uh, Q&A. So questions. So um, if you want to go into the um, uh, the, the chat, uh, and I'll leave while in the question period, I'll leave uh, on this slide where we see the contact information of both the speakers. Uh, as well, if you wanted to uh, use one span with a new license because you're not using it right now, uh, there's a little promo code which you see on screen. Uh, so if you want to um, take advantage of one span, um, there's a rebate and the offer ends August 31st. Okay, I see one question um, in the chat for authentication via text code verification. Uh, the app Salesforce and parentheses would need to pass the mobile phone number to eSign. Is that correct? Um, and I don't know, Fred, if you have the answer to that question, if you want me to repeat the question. Can you elaborate the question? I'm not sure I'm following. The yeah, so for authentication via text code verification, uh, the app would need to pass the mobile phone number to eSign. Is that and correct? So, so you the, need the yeah, mobile. So. The requirement is to yes to have the mobile phone number. Um, it, it's as long as the, that uh, phone. It's not that be required to be a smartphone. It's just a phone that requires that it receive a text message. Uh, and uh, one span sign will send a text message with a PIN, but the only requirement is the cell number. All right. And I don't know, Louis, if you can also jump in there. Can Salesforce send the contract via text? Or is it always sent through the uh, one span server? Yeah, so my understanding is that uh, the contract is sent via email, but it's the two step authentication uh, to just add a little bit more security that can also be sent via uh, mobile phone. Okay, it also, it also could be integrated to portal applications if the portal is the uh, channel that you go to instead of sending an email. But that 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 requires um, integration uh, work, but but that is that is also possible. Some organizations prefer that they go to a customer portal site to access the transaction and sign it from there. So that's another way of, uh, or if it's a mobile application too, it could be a mobile app that you have, and you want to incorporate e signatures. But um, those are the three uh, three options that that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, any other questions? Well, I'll, I'll, yeah, there's another question coming up as I do a split screen here. Um, okay, uh, is billing uh, per user or per document basis, or what is the billing structure? And I'm talking here, I, I'm guessing the question is for one span. Oh, okay, I'll start with for, for Louis. Uh, it's either either one. Uh, the professional edition is licensed on a number of what we call senders. So a sender is an individual that is licensed to create and manage a signature transaction, like Louise showed to you in the uh, Salesforce uh, connector, uh, the standard one out of the box, which is essentially allows you to create and manage signature transaction. Uh, the other one is uh, to a, what we call a transactional commitment. Um, which would allow you to do some more personalized integration, like Blue was referring to, automate that creation process, um, which allows you to use the uh, Apex SDK to allow you to do that that, that 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 integration. That is based on an annual commitment of transactions, and a transaction is defined as basically a container of documents, kind of like you're stacking documents in a FedEx envelope, and you're telling FedEx 
go fetch me the signers to get the this package signed. So it's a package based commitment, but it is paid at the beginning of the year uh, to to um, to get the proper rate for that uh, transaction for that uh, volume of transactions you commit to. We mentioned that it's possible to send other documents along with the one that has to be signed. Is this correct? So when when a contract is sent to be signed, can other documents be sent as attachments as well? The answer is yes. You, right. uh, and, and just 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 to elaborate on that, you can also include documents that don't necessarily require a signature, but acknowledgement that they've received them. So it's kind of similar to. Canada Post or your U.S. Postal Services delivering your letter and you're signing saying that you've delivered that letter. So it's an acknowledgement that you received it. So you can incorporate that or you can just leave them as attachments. It's pretty much up to you to design how that works from an experience perspective. So nothing new in the chat. Uh, of course, uh, don't hesitate to contact either Louis or Fred if you have any more questions. Uh, they're very responsive. Hopefully, the webinar was useful for you today. Uh, and enjoy the uh, game this afternoon. All right. Have a good day, everyone.